ask you. You have spent an entire generation with the Uncharted series. Has everything you've learned from that experience uh, prepared you for this game? Uh, I mean, there's no way that it hasn't. I mean, if you look at the evolution from Uncharted Drake's Fortune, Uncharted 2, Uncharted 3, everything that we learned from one game led us to work on the next game and sort of what we wanted to explore, the improvements we worked on our engine, you know, the new technologies that we added. Um, we have our serial culture for, you know, even the game itself was always very iterative. So each game that we work on builds on the previous game in some form or fashion. And that's absolutely the case in The Last of Us. I mean, the basic example is, you know, just our technology, you know, we have the same foundation, the Naughty Dog engine that uh, powered Uncharted 3. You know, we brushed it off and create, uh, customized it for what we needed to do for The Last of Us. Um, so, yeah, of course, you know, every game, we have to look, yeah, it's a learning process, right? You have to learn from the past to be able to move forward. Uh, this game seems uh, to hit in a completely new genre. Do you believe that it will pave the way for new industry trends the same way as the Crash, Jack, and Uncharted series have proven to be? For example, in Uncharted, uh, as soon as it launched, uh, you seem to see a, a lot of cover-based shooters all around. Well, I mean, you know, we don't set out to do that. <laughs> it's always flattering when it does happen. Um, I think what's really interesting for us is trying to explore new things, trying to play, you know, what kind of part of the genesis for The Last of Us is, um, you know, Bruce and Neil, they wanted to create a game that they wanted to play, and they didn't see it out there. Um, and they said, well, you know, the game we want to play is this, you know, can we make it? And that's what turned into The Last of Us. So uh, to them, you know, they felt that they were creating something unique because they couldn't find it elsewhere. Otherwise, you know, they would say, oh, I've, I have this, you know, genre, I have this type of game that I'm trying to want for trying to create something. So, you know, really that, that's what it comes from is, you know, we're trying to create a game that we want to play. Um, and if it resonates with people, if it resonates with our fans, if you know other people in the industry, you know, find it interesting, that's always great. But that's not what we set out to do. You set out to create trends rather than uh, just follow them. To create something you want to see. The, the, yeah, but the, we don't have like a we don't have a we don't have a bigger goal, right? We don't have a goal to sit there and say, well, you know, this is the start of a trend. We just want to create something that we like to play that Quality we can't find. Yeah. Now, making a new IP right at the end of a generation, isn't that a bit risky? No. <laughs> Why? Uh, I mean, not, not really. You know, like, if you, look at, uh, if you look at all the benefits we get, you know, we have, I mean, I can't even think of how many years now. Like, I, we have, like, seven years' worth of experience on the hardware, right? You know, it's, it, we have an engine that's iterated over time. Uh, for us, there's no better time for us to create a game like The Last of Us. We we have so much to learn. We've been able to advance the technology so much. We've been able to really take advantage of the the hardware. Um, and there's a great install base, right? There's a huge audience that can play the game. And really, at the end of the day, when you're looking at as a storyteller, as a video game developer, uh, you want to hit the broadest audience possible. You want as many people to play the game because you you know you think this is your baby, and I think it's something special. Um, so I think you know really it, it, there's a lot of benefit to that. All right. Uh, is The Last of Us ready to be uh, a saga like your previous uh, games have been? Or do you simply want to create a single story for this? Uh, well, if you look at what we've done for the Uncharted series, right? Like when we set out Uncharted Drake's Fortune, it told a story. But a story that could continue on to two. Or if you play three, you don't have to play one to know what happens in three or to identify with the characters. Um, so we definitely built The Last of Us with that similar type of philosophy where it is its own story. But you know, you, like anything else, you hope that it's successful enough that uh, fans uh, like it enough that you have the opportunity to tell more stories. I mean, we spent a lot of time and resources uh, to create this deep universe, these interesting characters. Uh, it would be a shame to not explore them further. Um, so you know, it'd be nice to have that opportunity. Thank you. Um, and uh, with uh, has The Last of Us evolved? Because the game at first seemed to have the gameplay of Uncharted, of a typical cover-based shooter with a very linear progression, but then it seems to evolve into something completely different. Was the, um, was the product that you had in mind at the beginning completely different from what you had in mind right now, from the, the final product? I mean, I think it's different because as you're exploring different uh, different types of narrative, different types of gameplay, different things to do, 
uh, you're going to you're gonna figure out what works, what doesn't work, what feels good, what doesn't feel good. Um, I mean, you found that in the Uncharted series uh, to begin with because of the way our studio is built. Um, as a collaborative culture at the studio, as the fact that anybody in the studio can provide feedback to any other discipline in the studio. Um, and, you know, we're constantly just trying to improve every aspect of it. That's going to happen anyway. I mean, you know, it, if you look at the original script for Uncharted 3 to the final script for Uncharted 3, it's going to look different because we have input from the actors about what their characters are like. So it's the same thing basically happened with The Last of Us. It's, you know, as you start working on it, you realize, oh, this is working good. Let's explore that further. This isn't working all that great. You know, maybe we'll put this aside and come back to it later. Um, it's just part of the natural evolution for the Naughty Dog way of developing games. Uh, in Naughty Dog, do you usually have a lot of pressure from higher-ups to make your games easier or more accessible for a new audience? Or do you simply go with what you feel is right as a gameplay experience? Uh, we go with what we feel is right. I mean, I think we, you know, we have a bunch of people in the studio who work at a really high level and have a ton of experience. Um, and so, you know, I think we have that innate ability of knowing what's right for that. But, you know, we, we're very conscious as, as storytellers as well and as game makers that we do want to have as broad an audience as possible. We want we want everyone to experience the stories we tell. I mean, we think, you know, we spend so much time working on it, we think we have something special, we want everybody to play it. Um, so we're trying to find ways to sort of balance that too. I mean, that's why we have difficulty settings. Not because we want it to make it easier, just because we want to make it easier, but because, you know, there might be people that uh, have less experience with, you know, running two sticks, right? To be able to play the game and experience the story that uh, we've created. Uh, you have very experienced storytellers in Naughty Dog. Uh, especially since Uncharted, I think you've had uh, Amy Hennig, who had worked previously on the Legacy of Kane saga. Uh, and overall, Naughty Dog games have always been, uh, at least since the PS2 days, have always had a rich universe, a uh, very rich story, completely original. Do you feel that like that will follow with The Last of Us and for your future titles? Uh, that what that we're telling very rich, interesting stories. Uh, is that what, I'm sorry, I didn't quite yes. get your question. Um, well, I think you know, I think for us, it's it really comes down to that we're we are just in telling particular types of stories, um, and our studio culture is built around exploring human relationships. About exploring, I mean, even just exploring about themes that are central to us as humans that really resonate and evoke emotion for us. Um, and that's something that, uh, you know, has come about as hardware has gotten more powerful and it's allowed us to tell those stories. Not simply um, that, but very original themes because usually Naughty Dog games, you don't see the same kind of thing elsewhere. Yeah, I mean, I, even that part, you know, it comes down to, uh, just like we were doing with the gameplay is, you know, we want to tell the story that we want to see a particular story being told and we can't find it. So we end up making it. And it's great to have that freedom to say, okay, you know, there's this type of game or this type of story that we want to see or we want to play, but we can't find it, so let's just create it. Uh, one last question. Um, a lot of people uh, sometimes wonder whether Naughty Dog will go back to its previous franchises uh, in past games such as Crash, Jack, Uncharted. You normally stop with the third installment, and sometimes a racing game. A lot of people are still waiting for the Uncharted kart <laughs> racing game. Um, so, I mean, there's a there's an interview actually from when we announced uh, The Last of Us, where um, I mean, this happened in the studio when Neil and Bruce were trying to figure out what kind of game they wanted. We actually did look at the Jack franchise. We have a lot of fans uh, who still want another Jack game, um, but you know it has its own host of challenges. I mean, Jack was the way it was because. Uh, you know, there are certain limitations with the PS2 hardware. We were able to push it very far, but we couldn't create realistic, uh, rounded humans and characters out of that. Um, and still you made in incredibly impressive <laughs> in, uh, animations. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're, I mean, we're able to accomplish a lot, but I think the, the point was it's, you know, like with the next generation, it opened up a whole new host of opportunities. Um, and so it was, when we looked at it, it's like, it's you know, Jack works because it works for that hardware. Uh, and it was really difficult to translate that to the new hardware and become more realistic. You lose a lot of the charm. You lose a lot of what makes those characters interesting because you're, you're trying to push it too far. Um, so right now, it's not in our cards, but you, know, you never know what t who in the studio might want to champion it and create their own team for that. 
And this is more of a fan question <laughs> from other people. Uh, do any anyone does anyone in the studio ever think of buying back Crash? <laughs> I'm sure there's a lot of people who'd like to go back and uh, work on the Crash franchise. I mean, you know, all, every every game, every character we've created is always near and dear to our heart. Well, we wish you a lot of luck with The Last of Us. The game seems absolutely amazing. Uh, it seems like nothing we've ever seen before. Uh, Thank you very much for deviating from the usual zombie formula and going with something completely new. Sure. Thank you for you know being interested in it. I mean, I hope that you enjoy the final game. And uh, just wanted to say that a lot of fans in Portugal are very interested, and we hope you come back with your future games. I hope so too. It's always great to be here. <laughs>